Thanks for joining us tonight. The legal fight appears to be over for the man who police wrongly named a person of interest in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. Dan Rassier filed a lawsuit against investigators, but it's now been officially dismissed. Lou Raguse talked with him today. This was the headline on the front page of the St. Cloud Times on July 3rd, 2010. Dan Rassier, a person of interest in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling, according to Stearns County Sheriff John Sanner. That, as state investigators dug up his farm looking for evidence. The 11-year-old was kidnapped at the end of Rassier's driveway 21 years earlier on October 22, 1989. I had no idea what was happening up by the mailbox. Shortly after the newspaper headline made the sheriff's suspicion public, Rassier told CARE 11 authorities had privately been accusing him since Jacob disappeared. 21 years of my life has been revolving, you might say, around this whole conspiracy thing. In 2017, after Danny Heinrich was arrested and eventually admitted he kidnapped and killed Jacob, leading authorities to his body, Rassier sued the investigators. His attorney Mike Patton in the federal civil complaint said investigators used lies and innuendo to convince a judge to allow the search of Rassier's farm, ruining his reputation and causing fear and anxiety. They have never even made any attempt that we know to reach out and to apologize to, for what they did. But a federal judge ruled against Rassier and now a federal appeals court agrees, not based on his claims, but just because of a technicality. Too much time passed the statute of limitations ran out. When I look at the whole situation with Jacob Wetterling and he's gone and, and I'm twice the age I was basically when he was taken, I, I'm appalled, I'm scared of what law enforcement and the judicial system can do and get away with it. And so the statute of limitations is six years. And if you look at the timeline, this case was not solved until more than six years after Rassier's farm was raided. Dan also told me today on the phone that back when the case was unsolved, he was afraid to sue in case investigators would further retaliate against him, plant evidence or something like that. Yeah, it was hard for him, I remember back then, to live in that community. Mm -hmm. There was so much suspicion. But Luke, you took a look at that application for a search warrant and it surprised you as well. Yeah, I mean, I have it here, and I, I, it's several pages long. It's uh, a lot of innuendo. I mean, that's, that's essentially what most of it is, using things such as uh, the fact he was hypnotized while they were questioning him, and some of the things he said under hypnosis didn't match the things he said when he wasn't hypnotized, so they used innuendo that way. They talked to a woman that went on a date with him and tried to use his dating history as an innuendo that something was off. And then they even said that he was under investigation in Europe by Interpol. And that's something that his attorney says was a straight out lie. And, and there's nothing he can do about starting that clock over for the statute of limitations. Not his fault the case wasn't solved for so long. That's what they were trying to argue through this whole process. But now a judge ruled last year against him. And just recently, the appeals court agreed with the judge. There are some other options that they can to try to keep it going. But really, the window is closed now and it looks like he has lost this case. All right, thank you, Lou. Mm -hmm.